Nordstrom is now the latest business to join a retail exodus from downtown San Francisco. The company cited dwindling foot traffic in the decision not to renew leases for two of its stores, including the one in the Westfield Mall, which placed blame for the departure partly on unsafe conditions for customers and employees and urged city leaders to find a solution to combat, quote, rampant criminal activity. Safety concerns were also cited for Whole Foods after the company announced last month it was shutting down flagship stores in the area. Retailers Anthropology and Office Depot are also leaving. But San Francisco officials argue the city's struggles to retain businesses has less to do with an increase in crime, but rather a problem with public perception. Yeah, crime will do that. With us now, NBC <laughs> News correspondent Jake Ward. So, Jake, here, here's what I don't get. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I love San Francisco. Yeah. I've always loved going so to San Francisco. Uh-huh. I know where you're going. Go ahead. Absolutely going. Yep. have loved it. And so I take it personally. Mm. When I go back to San Francisco, and it has become so much more dangerous, and then I get lectured by people saying, oh, San Francisco, this is how San Francisco's always been. This is just a right-wing attack on San mm. Francisco. And it's almost that argument, what are you going to do? Are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? And all of my friends that have gone there, people who can, I consider San Francisco a magical city. It is. That's it's right. a dangerous magical city now. And I just want to know where do these statistics come from that people use and say, oh, it's as safe as it's ever been. These are just right wing talking points. So I think that the complication here that we're all looking at is, you know, first of all, let's just point out, right, San Francisco for a city of less than a million people has a pretty outsized national reputation, it's getting a lot of attention for this. And recently, the death of Cash App founder Bob Lee in this horrific staffing mur stabbing murder downtown, um, you know, it has drawn, again, incredible uh, reputational harm to that city. But in our look at the statistics, what we learned is that, in fact, the death of Bob Lee says a lot more about our assumptions as a nation about crime than it does about the crime itself. After Bob Lee's death in San Francisco, many commentators speculated on social media that the killer was someone homeless and mentally ill. David Sachs, a Silicon Valley investor, said so on his podcast. This idea of just releasing these people onto the street I just think is an outrageous abdication of responsibility. But the man arrested in the crime turned out to be a tech consultant who knew the victim, according to police. And just like the mistaken assumptions in that case, San Francisco's dangerous reputation does not square with the data. San Francisco has challenges with crime, with public safety, and we're doing everything we can to deal with it. But just because people are seeing it in a more heightened way because of social media videos and sadly, sometimes people jumping to conclusions, it's unfortunately made San Francisco a bit of a target. Violent crime in San Francisco is at historic lows, and its murder rate is far below most other cities its size, according to police and FBI data. But the pandemic brought a wave of property crime. The bike connection saw its windows smashed repeatedly. Have you had much in the way of property damage since then? Thankfully, no. Just kind of vandalism type things, but we haven't had any major attempts to have our bikes stolen. No big break-ins. No big break-ins. What about drug activity on the streets? What do you see about that? That does seem to be worse. It seems like fentanyl has really gotten to a lot more kids. And that is where San Francisco really suffers. A fentanyl epidemic here, more than 200 overdose deaths in just the first three months of the year, has the governor calling in the Highway Patrol and the National Guard to help. The district attorney, Brooke Jenkins, criticized her predecessor's progressive reforms and ran for office on a platform of greater accountability. Prosecutions and convictions are up. I've taken a very strong approach in sending a message that this is not going to be something that we tolerate or take lightly because of the fact that we have so many overdose deaths. And should we be in any way uh, doubtful that that's going to make a difference, considering that we're not seeing fundamental numbers like overdose deaths go down, that those problems seem to be just as bad as they've ever been? 
it's a twofold situation. We have to have public health resources available to those who are struggling with addiction, while at the same time, law enforcement does its job to make sure that those who are peddling fentanyl are taken off the street or at the very least are held accountable. But while San Franciscans are as safe from violent crime as they were in the 1960s, Jenkins says perception as well as data shapes her priorities, like aggressively prosecuting drug dealers. Our metric is what the people of San Francisco feel, what the people who come into San Francisco to work and to visit feel. And irrespective of what the data shows, we have a job to do to make sure that we address that feeling. But the city's public defender says that perception distracts from long-term policies that can actually change the city's drug problem. Housing, job opportunities, people get more stable and people get more stable. We're less likely to have these kind of overdose deaths. And more prosecution does not, in your view, solve that problem? Not at all. We know that from 50 years of experience. So what we've really learned here is that San Francisco absolutely deserves its national reputation around crime when it comes to property crime, and especially when it comes to the big problem, which is overdose deaths and drug crime. But violent crime is as low as it has almost ever been, and it is that discrepancy. What you see on the street, the grittiness, the horror that you see walking around, that is real, but it turns out not to correlate with an actual chance of being a victim of you violent know, I crime. I lived in San Francisco long, long ago, yeah. right, in the late 70s, the golden age, right? Yes. And, and I'll tell you, you didn't walk around the Tenderloin District, mm. you know, late at night um, very comfortably. There were, there were, in fact, parts of uh, the city south of Market Street uh, that were really kind of seedy mm. and, um, <laughs> uh, and, and compared, certainly compared to what they are now. Now there's like art galleries and museums and all the stuff where uh, it wasn't very nice back then. Well, and, and, and I'm not sure how you would have also recorded it all and shared it with the world in Right. the 1970s. Right? Yeah, exa exactly, that, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I, you know, what we didn't have then was this huge, visible, homeless um, encampment, basically, with, with, with tents and everything like that, even though there was a homelessness problem even then. Um, and, and I'm wondering also, uh, just in terms of downtown, um, the business district probably has sort of emptied out like business districts everywhere because of the pandemic That's and right. those were so isn't that why a lot of and these online. retailers are closing down and restaurants <laughs> well, I mean, so wait, wait 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 what's the laws that they have though that you don't get arrested with that unless you reach a certain level for for property crimes i mean yeah. come on i mean I, again with, with all due respect we're friends mm -hmm. or at least we're friends on tv <laughs> oh, there are people who love san francisco that want right. to go to san francisco and they don't go into san francisco going i'm going to come in here to hate this and take a picture and post it on Instagram. I, well, when, I, when people talk about their feelings, there's a reason why people who go to San Francisco, who love San Francisco, have negative feelings. Absolutely. I have, absolutely I have absolutely colleagues and associates exactly who have lived in San Francisco who have left in the past years precisely because of those feelings and perceptions and realities. Realities. They don't, yeah. they don't I mean, look, the statistics are nuanced, obviously, but clearly people within the city limits also feel like the city's changed. For but, the and, and, and so by the way, Whole Foods. Right. I mean, you talk you know, with them, Nordstroms. Yep. I mean, we have we have a good friend who went in, went into a store about five minutes later. You know, people come in with guns. They see, you know, they see everybody gets on the floor. This is like in a in a supposedly good part of town there. So again, it's not just quote feelings. This isn't a Morris Albert song. It's a 1970s throwback. This is like people are in San Francisco and they don't feel right. safe. So Maybe they're not going to yeah. get shot in the head. Let me, let me just stack up a few okay. factors here that I think everybody in this country should be thinking about when it comes to their own downtowns and what's going on. So here are the things that we have now that we did not have in the 1970s and that everybody is going to have to deal with at some point. The first one is opioids, right? We've got a fentanyl epidemic that is making people uh, fall out of their lives in this fundamental way, and we have no answer to that in this country at all. Second, we have the pandemic, which not only right. cratered downtown businesses in all ways, right. It also, in San Francisco, especially where 85% of the tax revenue comes from the downtown financial district, you have a place in which people are lit literally that industry invented the demise of the downtown quarter because mm -hmm. everybody can work from home. Those companies yeah. absolutely blew up their own leases right. by being the companies that Salesforce made the Salesforce moved out of the Salesforce, Salesforce Tower. Whose number is right? right. the biggest, the tallest Whose name, is everywhere. Whose name right. is everywhere has moved out of there, right? <laughs> then on top of that, you have a tremendous lack of investment in resources. 
There is no inpatient mental health facility inside the city limits of San Francisco. The wow. closest one you've got is in That's Napa. Nice. That's an yeah. hour away. Wow. So you've got people Crazy. who've got a core, you know, people wow. who have serious mental illness and no resources at all. There's a movement right now in California to try to uh, coerce people into treatment if they can get it. The, the, I was talking to public officials and they told me privately they call that the court to nowhere because there is no services to help these people out. So you've got all those factors. And on top of that, Joe, I do not disagree with you. When you walk those streets, it feels bad. You feel unsafe. But all of us, I would say, local people who, when we heard about the death of Bob Lee, and of course, this is just a feeling, but again, feelings count as we're discussing here. I remember hearing about his death and thinking, what? He what? He was killed where? By right. who? Yeah. It right. is so unusual in the experience of people who live in the Bay Area to think that someone would randomly do that. And then it turned out, of course, it's a person he knew. It was, a, at least that's the alleged, uh, you know, right. that's, that's the person who was arrested here. And so there is absolutely a crisis in San Francisco. And that crisis wow. is homelessness and fentanyl. The crisis is not dangerous. I'm